Hello everyone, Tony here. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about networking and how VLANs and how VLAN tagging works on switches. Because I think it's kind of interesting and it's something that I had, I guess, overlooked until I was thinking about it more recently when I was configuring a network switch. So I guess the first thing I should explain is what are VLANs, right? So VLANs, spelled uh, are virtual LANs. Essentially, they're a way in which we can send multiple different LAN connections over the same piece of wire. And it's virtual because, you know, it's over the wire. So if I have a CAT6 cable like this, you run one cable, except I can run, you know, four different networks, which are completely isolated from each other. Maybe even, like, they can be completely different networks. Um, and so the general way VLAN wor the VLANs work is you need to have VLAN, like, you need to have equipment uh, on either end that can actually understand and encode and decode the VLAN tags that go on all the packets. Um, so VLAN numbers are like 10 to, uh, you know, like 1,000 or something. Um, the exact numbers don't matter for this. But essentially, if, I have a, if this is my cable, right? First, the first requirement is that obviously devices on both ends know how to put and read these numbers. So the default VLAN, VLAN like 1, as we'll call it, is just the one where the numbers don't have any tags, right? So if I have packets, you know, these are like, say, layer two link layer, which means that they encapsulate a layer three IP packet, which means that those encapsulate a transport layer packet. So uh, I guess without getting too far into depth, the numbering I'm going to be using is layer one is the physical layer, layer two is the link layer. This is, that means that they use MAC addresses and it's the that link we're talking across. Layer three network layer, that's IPv4 and IPv6. So this is how we get from point A to point B on the public, like open internet. Um, and then I'll talk about, um, and then layer four is transport layer, so that's TCP or UDP. Now we're talking about like program to program, like session based uh, connections, or sessionless if you want to be a UDP fan. Uh, and then, you know, application layer above that. So that's kind of the rough model I'm going to be sh working with here. So if we have um, packets that are flowing across here, a, basically a VLAN would be like attaching a little number to it that says, hey, you're actually part of like LAN number 10. Or, you know, hey, you're actually part of, I'll just put it inside the box, you're part of LAN 20. Maybe LAN 20 is like for your CCTV cameras, LAN 25 is your guest network, and 50 is like your internal network or something, right? You can tag these. Um, if the devices on the other ends don't know about it though, then you know those tags are useless. So we'll assume that the number one, like VLAN one, is equivalent to an untagged packet. So there's an untagged packet, we're just gonna assume those are in VLAN 1. So this is how you normally, when you plug in your ethernet cable, it works, right? There's packets flowing across the wire, here's maybe another packet. Here's maybe another packet. Maybe they're UDP for you watching this video, or maybe it's TCP because you're loading my wiki. I don't know. Uh, could be any number of things. Um, but we have these packets, and they're flowing between these two computers. And if either the standard way is that they're just going to be part of the default like network, no VLAN. Um, and now we can separate these into VLANs. And as I said, the limit is that the devices on both ends have to be able to read. So most computers. Computers are very sophisticated, right? Computers almost always can read VLANs. So I can tell my computer, hey, I don't want you to like connect to like the normal thing and read the normal packets. I want you to actually like connect to VLAN num number 50. And what the computer will do is basically all of these, if it's like, hey, say this is like VLAN 10 or something, it's gonna ignore it. It's gonna look for a packet which is tagged with like VLAN 50, and those are the packets it's going to actually read. And when it's sending a packet, guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna, it's gonna tag it with VLAG ID number 50. Now, switches, on the other hand, are a little bit more varied, right? So typical, like, enterprise managed switches almost always support VLANs. In fact, they'll let you configure each port, and I'm going to talk about that in this video. Unmanaged switches are a bit hit or miss. Some, most, un, most unmanaged switches do not support VLANs at all. Some, I found that a couple switches that, while it's unmanaged, and it can't, you can't tell it, I want this port to always get tagged to this VLAN, and this port to always get tagged to this VLAN. Like, it can't do that layer of management data, but it actually lets the VLAN headers go through. So like you can at least send them, like keep them tagged on the network, but it won't be able to tag and untag them. It doesn't have that support. But if it's tagged, it'll kind of just like, you know, let it flow. So that's this, so that's kind of the basis. All right. So on this end of the wire, let's say we have a managed network switch, right? So this is not the symbol for a network switch. I'm just drawing it so it's like easy for people to see. And let's say this is a basic switch that has, you know, four ports or something. Terrible switch. I would never. I wouldn't want to switch with only four ports. Let's say that wire is connected to that port, and that I've got a computer over here that's connected to that's to that port on that switch. 
On managed switches, ports can typically, with VLANs, take on one of a couple of values. You can tag them. They can be untagged and part of a VLAN. Or you can exclude. That is at least the case on the HP switch I use. Of course, your switch maybe uses different words, but the core concept the principle is the same. If I only have the one wire, say I'm tagging it, right? That means that, uh, say I have packets coming from VLANs 10, 11, and 12. And say this is like my upstream or something, right? Say this port comes over here to a router. I have a router here, and say the router is spitting out packets on VLANs 10, 11, and 12. And say this port here is configured to tag T11, T12, oh, and T10. Sorry for that. Um, so that port there is configured to tag uh, packets with headers 10, 11, and 12. So what's going to happen when the router sends a packet with uh, VLAN ID 10, 11, or 12? Well, it's just going to get tagged, which is how it was coming from the router. But this will essentially mean that it passes over here. And this computer can choose what it wants to do with it. And technically, because Ethernet is a bus, you could technically have a hub here. So you can, there can actually be multiple computers sharing the link. But we're not going to get into those nitty gritty details about um, these paths here. And the computer gets VLANs 10, 11, 12. Say the router also had a default, right? Number one. So the router is a default network. Normal, say, internet packets are VLAN one, and things for different uses are whatever. So we can also say it's technically going to tag one. So here it gets one. Tagging one, as I said, is kind of bizarre because you can't actually tag VLAN one. So you will assume that this is untagged, and I'll talk about what that means. We have VLAN 10, 11, 12. They're flowing here, uh, and this computer can say it's running, I don't know, Linux. <laughs> or BSD. A lot of networking devices do use BSD as well. This computer can choose to can decode these and do whatever it wants with them. Maybe on Linux, you're going to send this one over to your VPN. This one is like for an Nginx server, and the other one's for something else. I don't know. It's your choice. You can do whatever you want. Like Linux networking is pretty powerful. Um, so that would be that. Now. Let's suppose that this untag wasn't here. And then let me show you what an untag does. This computer normal now, right now doesn't have a normal like internet connection. It has to use one of the VLANs. Because the, like, there's no packet. Like, if there's a packet without a tag, the switch doesn't know what to do with it. So let's figure it out. Usually, you will almost always have to have at least one of your VLANs be untagged. So let's say that I untagged VLAN 1. What does this mean? This means that 10, 11, and 12 are allowed to flow on this wire, and they will remain tagged like this. But I can also have packets from VLAN 1. So I can have something like this. And these ones that don't have headers, these are actually 1. Untagged means that essentially these ones will be sent with no header. So this computer, the minute you plug it in, it's automatically going to connect to this one, like the untagged, right? Because it's going to receive untagged packages and when it's packets, and when it sends stuff, it's going to send them without tagging them. So they're going to go as part of this untagged VLAN. And uh, say on this port, I chose again U1, T10, T11, T12. It says expected, right? Like everything works. But what I can do now, where this gets a little more interesting, is say this one's like this. But say I don't want this computer on VLAN. Say this is like a Hikvision or Dahua camera, and I don't want it on the public internet for obvious reasons. Uh, if you're not sure what the obvious reasons are, like you shouldn't put cameras on the public internet. They'll just get like hacked. But instead, say we chose to untag 12 and keep 10 and 11 tagged. So let's tag 10, tag 11, untag 12. You can only have one untagged on the network, and you're going to see why. So now, what this means is that whenever something's going with VLAN, like that I want to go to VLAN 12, this computer actually doesn't tag it. Right? So if it sends anything, like if it sends a packet without any VLAN ID or VLAN header, it's just going to go on the wire. So I plug the computer in normally. The computer will send it. It's going to send it over here. The switch goes, hey, so let's say, we had an untagged packet flowing over here towards the switch, right? 
the switch receives this untagged packet. It's like, okay, cool. This one doesn't have a VLAN ID on it. So what could it actually possibly be? Check the list. Oh, hey, this computer says untag 12. That means that packets without a tag are, belong to VLAN 12. And I'd say this is going to the router, right? To R1, let's say router 1. Say, say this is R1. I apologize that this video is getting a little chaotic. I, this is what I get for not scripting this and going completely off the cuff here. So it's going to come here. This, is, this VLAN is untagged, so it's going to go, okay, this is an untagged VLAN. Now, like, you know, so it's actually, internally, it's going to assume, hey, this is actually VLAN 12. And if it's going to the router, when it's exiting this way, it's going to check, and it's like, oh, okay, this is number 12, because 12 was untagged. We, oh, we actually got to tag it. So it's when, it, when the packet comes here, and that same packet leaves, it's going to get a tag of 12 going to the router. And vice versa. Say the router then was like, okay, cool, you know, now it's, it sent the request to the public internet, and it got a reply from the public internet. So the router has the reply. We got our packet to, let's call this computer one or something. The router is like, OK, I want this computer, I want this packet to be on network number 12. So it tags it as VLAN 12, and it makes its way to the switch. Now the switch is like, OK, cool. There's, There's a lot of dependencies here, here for example. example. If this is a public internet connection in the IP layer, the incoming packet will actually be the IP of the router, not the client, because you could be using that. And that would mean that the NAT is mapping network, network address translation, by the way. Um, so if it's using that, then it gets a new private IP address, and the private IP address is going to make its way over the Linux computer here. But let's assume that's not the case. Let's assume that this is, you know, 1990s. The world hasn't run IPv4 addresses yet. And so we can willingly give IPv4 addresses to every single computer. So then it actually comes in, and the like, oh, cool, OK, look, it's for this public IP address. I know where to send that. And it's going to put the uh, MAC address of this machine. It's going to send an request, which is basically what tells it, hey, so MAC, or the layer is used to determine the next opera, the IP layer is used for like, all the pops put together, right? Um, it's, it's, it's going to determine it. Uh, and normally, with a router, like, right, like, you need to send an opera request to find, OK, this is MAC. Basically, art is, you send out an IP address, you say, hey, who has this IPv4 address? Or IPv6. And that person that has an IP address says, oh, 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 it's me, and here's my MAC address, send it to me, and it sends it. Uh, by the way, we have switching mill, uh, which is the problem, because as I said, this whole aside was for the explain packets, which are self-learning, meaning that when packets are flowing through it, it will learn the MAC address of both ends, and start to look up people. Or like, people. Arc being address resolution protocol. I'm sorry if I called the Arc protocol. It's, it's, it has protocol built into the name. Um, all right, so let's find out what was the point. The point was, router got the packet. VLAN 12, sent it to the switch. The switch goes, oh, cool. It's going to this MAC address. I know where that MAC address is. That MAC address is this computer right here. And then it can say, oh, OK. So like, we know that that port, we should untag 12. Because maybe you know it's a computer that doesn't support VLANs or something. So it's going to untag it and send it as an empty, like, untagged packet over here, this computer gets it in its normal internet connection. They can do some more chaotic stuff. For example, uh, untagged here can be VLAN 5, and then, like, get converted to tagged here. Tagged can get converted to untagged. Um, let's talk about the third mode, which is exclude. So say I change this port to actually exclude VLAN 11. I don't know. Say 11 is, like, my public network, and I don't want this to be able to connect to 11 for whatever reason. If the switch sees anything with 11, Drop. That, that, that's not making its way over there. Uh, so if the computer sends something with 11, it excludes it. If the router sends something, say the router is like, oh, cool, this is for 11. And then it's going to go to that computer, comes here to the switch. The switch says, hey, uh, actually, VLAN 11 is excluded. Uh, so it just gets dropped. Now, things get really more exciting when we have multiple connections, because that's when we can start getting into more exotic setups. Um, but I think you can see from here why you can only have one be untagged, because Say I had both 10 and 11 and 12. Like, say I had all three of those untagged. Router gets a packet for, router sends a packet for 11. Switch gets it. Switch can say, OK, I'm going to untag it and send it. And then the computer sends an untagged packet. Say the computer now sends an empty one. What does the switch do? Right? Maybe the router didn't, is only doing 10, 11, 12. And maybe this can do, we have a separate like router or something here. I don't know. That does VLANs 20. And say I told it to also untag like 20 on this wire. Is it going to go to that router with the untagged like 10? Or is it going to go to this router with the untagged 20? Which one does it interpret at? So this means that, yeah. In short, only one VLAN can be untagged on a given port. And the rest have to be tagged. Um, I hope this has made some amount of sense. Uh, so I guess brief recap is, so I guess time for just a general brief recap. Tagging a particular VLAN ID on a port means that packets with that VLAN are allowed to flow, and they will get the little number inside the box. Technically dangling outside the box in the header, but 
if I put them in front of it, you probably wouldn't be able to see it on this camera. So let's assume that the numbers are inside the box. And both computers are happy as long as the devices on both ends know how to, what, how to deal with tagged packets. Untagging means that if something is going to that device with that VLAN, it'll just erase the number on the box and send it, send the same packet in an empty box. So it just gets it as part of its normal, what, we're, what we call like VLAN 1 connection. If the computer sends a packet with an empty box, no header, when it gets to the switch, the switch is instinctively basically going to slap that VLAN number onto that box as it goes to its next destination. And you can only untag one because, as I said, otherwise it would be confused over which, what the actual destination is. And the third mode, exclude, just means that if it has that VLAN, drop it. So say, I, as I said, you have cameras and you want them only connecting to an internal network, you will let that VLAN pass. And in fact, this is how I uh, run like our system. And in fact, I use untag because I use a dumb switch and like dumb cameras which don't understand VLANs. So they're just going to send their packets. And the minute it gets to the switch, the switch is going to tag them with a VLAN ID so that it knows, hey, this is the, like the DVR is on the same VLAN. It knows where to go. Essentially, it means that I can isolate. I have a 20-port switch. I can isolate which ports can go to where. Say I had a 16-port switch. And I set all of these to untag 10 and exclude everything else. I set these to untag 12, exclude everything else. Say these, I set to untag 50 and exclude everything else. And I don't know, this one's my router, so say I tag everything. Um, and then say like these three, I want to like tag 50 and then untag like 10 or something. This port can you talk to this port. Anything on this port cannot talk to these ports, right? So essentially, I can divide up my switch and who's allowed to talk to who. If something's sending packets here without like tags, well, it can go to, say, the router or this, but uh, it cannot go to the public internet. And my router is tagged. So this means that on my router, I can actually write firewall rules. And again, firewalls being smart and uh, have long, having lots of processing power, the firewall can look at the tag and say, hey, like that packet shouldn't be going there. Like, let's drop it or let's do something else with it. So it lets me, lets you isolate or have multiple. I mean, exactly as the name says, you can have multiple virtual connections. And the joy of this is that I have four distinct things connecting to like, the four different like subnets over here. I can then run a single wire over to my router, which tags everything. And I don't need to run four separate wires for four separate LANs. I have four LANs. It's all on the same wire. And the switch is essentially what goes, yeah, 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 I want like that LAN to connect to this part. I want this LAN to connect to this part. This part's like a computer. So maybe I want it to like connect normally. But I want the computer to have access to like maybe, I don't know, run diagnostics or configure stuff or um, set it up. Essentially, it can pick what goes uh, where in that regard. So my recording timer is about to hit uh, half an hour. So uh, I'm going to try to cut the video here to, so that you know it's not super annoying to watch. Hopefully, you learned something from this video. Hopefully, you found it interesting. Maybe you learned about a bit about networks and VLANs and how to configure managed switches, which maybe support VLANs. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing to the channel or leaving a like down below. It helps me out a lot. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.